This electronic display emanating from Australia's largest computer is a picture of the condition past, present and future of planet Earth. The program was originally devised by a scientist working from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Jay Forrester. It was developed under the auspices of the Club of Rome by an MIT research team to present a complex model of the world and what we humans are doing to it. The program, called World One, doesn't pretend to be a precise forecast. What it does for the first time in man's history on the planet is to look at the world as one system. It shows that Earth cannot sustain present population and industrial growth for much more than a few decades. P represents population. So here it is at 1900, and then it comes up to 1940, it starts to take off. Here we are at 1980, up to the turn of the century, and then it starts to peter off. Let's now have a look at this next curve, the Q curve, which is the quality of life. And this is represented by, for example, the amount of space people have, the uh, amount of money they have to spend, the amount of food they have to eat. Now, it increases rapidly up to 1940, but from 1940 on, the quality of life diminishes. And here we are about the turn of the century, and we come up to the year 2020, and it's really come right back. More people, of course, means that you start to chew up your supply of natural resources. And this is this curve here, the N curve. And it shows that slowly but steadily, the pool of natural wealth in the world, natural resources, minerals, oil, and so on, is slowly but steadily diminishing. So this is the situation. As population increases, the quality of life decreases, and the supply of natural resources decreases. But have a look at this curve here. This is called the Z curve, and it represents pop, uh, pollution. Now, predictably enough, as the population increases up to 1980, pollution increases. There's more rubbish. But from 1980 to the year 2020, pollution really takes off. This is assuming, of course, that we don't do anything about it. So the year 2020, the condition of the planet be starts to become highly critical. And if we don't do anything about it, this is what's going to happen. The quality of life is going to go right back to practically zero. Pollution is going to become so serious, right out here, that it will start to kill people. So the population will diminish. Right back here, less than it was in the year 1900. And at this stage, around about the year 2040, 2050, civilized life as we know it on this planet will cease to exist. The Club of Rome comprises some 70 men of widely varying backgrounds, but their common concern is that the world problems cannot be solved by individual nations. Alexander King, director of the World Bank and the United Nations OECD. Dr King, now you're describing the world as a closed system where all these things are interrelated, and yet the government, the control of the system is by individual nation states. Now, how do you convince them to cooperate? The sovereignty of these nations is no longer as absolute as it was. There's a gradual diminishing, whittling away of sovereignty, little bit by little bit. Uh, especially, of course, in the smaller countries, where it's more obvious. But the bigger countries have to do a good deal of this by agreeing with into international arrangements for uh, the law of the seas, or for the limits of fishing, or for control of uh, of the wavelengths and radio and 101 other things. But uh, especially in the technological field, I think, this is going to be increasingly so because of developments the next year. I was at an important meeting in Washington a couple of weeks ago, and Peterson, the former Secretary of Commerce, was saying the same thing from an economic point of view that the general world economic situation, the interdependence of countries on their food and fuels and so on, is leading to an interdependence which has seeds of draining away of sovereignty within it. So I don't think one can envisage an idealistic of jumping to a world federalism or anything of that sort. But the building up probably in the next uh, decade in a number of uh, particularly sensitive fields like energy, raw materials, uh, the use of the oceans, space, and so on, of a number of uh, what people are tending to call regimes, which will not be ordinary United Nations type of organizations, but semi-management organizations. There'll be a great deal of consent in them. Yeah.